The um, company was founded in early 2010 with the mission to transform how enterprises leverage machine data to, to drive IT and business insights. So to kick this off, I'd like to talk a little bit about the data. There are many ways of looking at data today. Um, one simple one, and the way we like to look at it, is to separate in two categories. The first one being human-generated data, and that's uh, data that's generated by human activity as output of human, of human uh, work, uh, things like documents, uh, videos, social networking activity, um, transactions, and so on and so forth. Um, and then the other category is machine data. Machine data is data generated by your systems like servers and uh, infrastructure like networks and uh, virtual machine infrastructure and uh, email systems and applications and sensors and, and everything really that has a microprocessor in it. And machine data is basically communicating to humans and other machines the status of what's going on within those processes and applications. Machine data brings forward uh, multiple interesting challenges, um, which can be summarized with, by the three Vs. The first V is volume. Uh, this data is very, very voluminous, and it's growing very, very quickly. Uh, it's doubling uh, nearly, nearly doubling every 18 months to two years, which is very much in line with the other um, law of computing, which is the Moore's law, which states that um, uh, machine computing capacity is doubling every 18 months to two years, uh, and it makes perfect sense that these two would be correlated. Um, the, the second V is velocity. This data is generated uh, at a very high rate of speed. Um, it's, uh, it's always time-stamped, and it's a system of record of what's going on right now. Um, and as such, it needs to be handled in, in real time uh, because it's most valuable if, if, if analyzed in real time. Uh, and then the third V is variety. Variety basically um, uh, represents the fact that each one of these machines uh, uh, speaks its own flavor of a language. There is no common schema. Uh, it's at best semi-structured, but uh, uh, for the most part, it's an unstructured data set that needs to be managed. So these, these uh, characteristics actually make this data set challenging um, for collection management and analytics. Uh, but if you have the right set of systems and you can, co can collect this data, you can solve some really important business use cases. So let me uh, switch to the next slide um, and talk about the three core ones that, that Sumo Logic focuses on with our customers. The first one is real-time search, search and troubleshooting. Once you have all of the data from your IT infrastructures, your data centers, your servers, your applications, you can use it to uh, reduce the time spent on troubleshooting issues, uh, downtime problems, uh, customer support-related issues, and dramatically reduce the amount of time you spent um, finding root causes for these issues, uh, which helps you ultimately reduce the mean time to identification and resolution of problems. The next core use case is proactive monitoring. Um, Proactive monitoring enables you to, if you can get, put a tap on this data, it enables you to actually move from the firefighting mode of troubleshooting and into a predictive mode of detecting and predicting issues before they actually impact your customers uh, and your internal employees. Um, usually these two go hand in hand. Uh, typically you can't predict every issue you have. And uh, as you troubleshoot, you uncover new root causes, you can then set up uh, proactive monitors to predict or, or detect them as they occur. Uh, imagine a situation where you have uh, had an outage in your application, for example, and it was because uh, your, your calls between your, your servers started timing out because of a network um, problem or overload network. Well, you can set up a monitor to monitor the latency of network calls between uh, your server nodes and ultimately potentially be able to um, detect that issue before it actually uh, causes an outage in your application. And then finally, um, you can leverage this data set um, to gain uh, business insights and improve your growth and efficiency. Uh, applications, for example, uh, write a lot of business relevant data into, into their logs and other machine data. So for example, imagine a situation where you run a online app or a, or a web app or a retail, retail site. Um, if you have an appropriate system, you can 
uh, start monitoring how many users you have uh, that are currently logged in, uh, what's the volume of transactions that you're processing on your website, and, and other very relevant business metrics in real time. So those are the three core use cases that we focus on and that our customers have leveraged uh, Sumo Logic for. Um, I'd like to now move on and talk a little bit about the common use cases for our real-time dashboards beyond, beyond the other use cases we have. So let's look at applications first. Um, and when I say applications, I mean um, both your, the custom code that you've written uh, for your own applications, the open source components that uh, you may run uh, to support those applications, um, third-party middleware like queuing systems or application servers, databases, ERPs, and everything uh, in between that helps power applications that you use in your, in your enterprise. So our customers use Sumo Logic to monitor various things for their applications. Uh, for example, as I mentioned earlier, things like how many users are logged in, which features on their online apps or, or, or products are popular, um, how many transactions are processed on a per minute, per second, per hour, per 24 hour period. Um, they're monitoring errors and exceptions and uh, looking at how, what are the new and unique exceptions that are occurring within the application modules and so on. Um, and then ultimately things like how many messages are in our queuing systems. That's actually one of the metrics that is important to Sumo Logic, and I'll, and I'll talk about that later, um, because it, it tells us whether our consumers are um, um, keeping, keeping uh, in step with our producers of messages and, and can indicate issues in the product. Um, other types of things, if you go down the application, uh, down the infrastructure stack into servers, um, you can start monitoring uh, operating system events and operating, operating system logs, such as what is the number of errors uh, per production server in, in our infrastructure. Uh, performance metrics, such as CPU and memory, and which processes and applications are consuming most of the CPU and memory available to those physical servers, or virtual servers for that matter. Security events, um, how many failed logins do we get per hour? Are we getting brute for Bruce Ford attacked? Uh, are we getting port scanned and so on? Uh, change and audit events and things like that. And then moving down from servers into uh, broader infrastructure, um, things like virtualization um, infrastructure like VMware. And, and you know, you can be looking at things such as uh, which VMs are consuming most of the hypervisor memory? Um, are my uh, hypervisors over-provisioned? Are there too many VMs running on them? Uh, network, and looking at latency and network issues across all of your network segments. Um, uh, looking at taking a deeper look into your storage infrastructure and what kind of effective IOPS are you getting across your uh, storage infrastructure, and many other things such as you know, active directory, creation of users and deletion of users and things like that. So all of these are just examples of what uh, our customers have leveraged our real-time dashboards to monitor, and there are many, many other use cases, and I'll, uh, I'll get into those in a little bit. So let me go on and uh, tell you a little bit about the actual technology and why we think it's unique and special. So first of all, you know, people talk about real-time um, all the time today, um, and I want to tell you why Sumo Logic real-time dashboards are unique in, from the real-time nature perspective. Um, first of all, Sumo Logic um, dashboards actually put a probe onto the ingest path of data and con continuously compute uh, uh, data and compute uh, metrics based out of that data before that data even hits our desks. So there is no recomputation. Uh, Sumo Logic dashboards don't rely on on historical data, they don't rely on summary searches or indexes, they constantly compute. And when a user of Sumo Logic um, opens up a dashboard, uh, they're simply attaching to an existing real-time view of what that dashboard is monitoring. There is no, there's no time to wait. You don't have to wait for those queries to run and com complete. It is simply showing you an exact current picture of what's going on. Uh, they update it you know, every few seconds, and I'll show you some of that uh, in a demo in a few seconds, a few minutes. Um, they also enable, enable powerful analytics. Uh, our search language uh, exposes to our users powerful mathematical, mathematical operators, statistical operators, sampling operators, and various other things that will allow our users to extract exactly the right metric um, that's relevant to their business, whether it be from IT or marketing or sales perspective. 
It also um, uh, enables you to to deploy very advanced visualizations that that sh that 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 make that data really pop and and help your users really consume what's actually going through the infrastructure. And that starts with with just simple charts like bar graphs and line graphs, and then goes into uh, stacking, stacked bar graphs, area area charts, and others. Um, it also allows you to set thresholds to to monitor uh, data values and change colors of those values and, and, and various other things like that. I'll show some of that in, in a few minutes as well. And finally, it's pretty straightforward. It's, it's simple to do. Um, it's based on the Sumo Logic search language, and if you're already a user of Sumo Logic, um, uh, you know how straightforward that can be. Um, it, it, from a search into a dashboard to a monitor, uh, it takes a single click, really, from, from your search interface to bring up a new monitor in a dashboard. And all of this is shareable. All searches and all dashboards are shareable. So if you have a, a core set of people who are creating this content for you, whether it's your application experts or your infrastructure experts, they can share these dashboards and searches, and all of that becomes available to your broader team, and everybody has the same same view into the infrastructure um, as the best experts that you have in your in, in your company. So that's uh, that's the technology. Um, I'll be happy to take some questions after the demo, um, but um, for now, what I would like to do is talk a little bit about what I'm going to show you today. So I'm going to demonstrate a couple of things. First, I'm going to focus on how Sumo Logic uses uh, Sumo Logic uh, to monitor our production test and development systems. We do this from two different perspectives. Uh, we do this from an operational monitoring perspective, where our operations team, operation teams uh, look at this data to make sure that our product is stable, that it's performant, that it's serving our customers uh, as well as we need them to. Um, and then uh, we also monitor our product from the real-time business perspective, uh, where we, where our product sales and marketing teams uh, look at the product metrics to determine how well uh, we are serving our customers again, uh, who are active users, which features are popular, um, and those kinds of uh, business relevant metrics. And then finally, I'll, I'll talk through um, some of the out-of-the-box content that, that come with Sumo Logic uh, around some of the core components that we have. I'll focus on just a couple. We have a variety of uh, we have a variety of uh, um, out-of-the-box components that uh, that are uh, that you can uh, read read about on our website. Okay, so let me switch over to my browser, and then we can go from there. Just one second here while I set up. Okay. Can I ask the Sumo Logic crew to confirm that you can see the browser? Looks good right now. Excellent. Okay. So I have logged in here into uh, Sumo Logic production um, system. For context, I'm going to show you here dashboards, um, example dashboards. Uh, that we use to monitor both of our production system and test systems. The data, the data that you will be seeing today is from uh, one of our large uh, staging deployments, which runs across more than 70 servers uh, that we use to do performance tests as well as tests of uh, new code and, and new features that we're developing. So uh, you will see the real use cases of how we use it for both from operational and real-time uh, business metrics. Okay, so let me switch over to um, a real-time dashboard uh, that we use for our operational uh, monitoring. So amongst many other dashboards, this one, um, this one uh, represents some core metrics that we, that we want to keep track of you know, on, on our production system. So one of the, for example, one of the core components that we have underneath Sumo Logic product uh, is what we call our configuration uh, database or data store. The configuration data store is a very important component of our product because it holds customer configuration, users, uh, saved searches, saved dashboards for all of our customers. And as you can probably tell, it's, it's critical for us to make sure that this component runs smoothly and that, is, that it provides appropriate response times because our customers depend on it. So on the, on the leftmost side of this graph, 
in the first top left, what you're seeing is a representation um, that helps our operations team really get a quick gauge on how, what types of calls um, is our configuration database responding to. So for example, here, as you can see in these different colors, are different types of calls and distribution of those calls. And as I look at this right now, over the last 60 minutes, I can see that this information actually looks pretty straightforward. It looks pretty predictable. Uh, that there is a, there's a sort of a smooth distribution of calls. Um, and, then, and, and these are the calls that, that we're monitoring, you know, particularly for this, for this, uh, for this database. This information is very familiar to our operations team, and they can, with a quick glance of an eye, they can spot if there is a, an anomaly happening within the, within the type of, types of calls that we're getting. Now, if something's going wrong, they can actually go just down to the, to the table below here and actually look at much more refined statistics of each one of those types of calls. So here we're extracting, and this is all based on log data that our application generates, uh, by call type, actually all of the relevant information, such as counts, average, uh, average response times, standard deviation of those response times, that really can help you narrow down where to start looking if you detect that there is an issue with our configuration data store. Okay, so that's one example. Other examples, we, we simply monitor um, things like errors across all of our um, application components and, and, uh, and, and uh, servers. So in the middle column here, what I have is errors by category. So our development team has uh, created a categorization of, of errors, of code essentially, that helps us detect um, how, what kind of errors we're getting across our product. So for example, here we have various categories that you can see here on the right. And as you look at this over the last 24 hours, it looks like we've had a few spikes in errors across certain components. So for example, it looks like at 9 p.m. Uh, yesterday on this, on this staging system, we had uh, an issue with our stream category. And um, that had a huge spike, and we can, we can, from here we can actually drill down and troubleshoot this particular component. And you can also see other things such as down here, uh, this CQ category only occurred at um, it looks like it was noon yesterday. It had a spike as well, a thousand errors or so. So this is uh, a very high level view. Down here, we also see we also track uh, errors by the hour across our application modules. So this is a very relevant metric to us because uh, what modules are to us is are actually uh, uh, components of code that do certain things for on behalf of our product, and we monitor those errors in streaming mode as well, and here you can see that something happened with, again, with our stream node uh, at sometimes around 9.33. This is an actually much more fine-grained view. It's a per-minute view of, of errors in our infrastructure. What you can also do is you can quickly um, turn off certain, certain uh, metrics and, and, and see how the other ones um, are behaving, and uh, you can change scales to, to better represent this data and, and other things that I'll show later. And we also look at it on a per-server mode. As I said earlier, uh, we run about 70 servers, or, or a few more than that, actually, for this particular production uh, or pre-production deployment. And this shows you the distribution of those errors uh, by, uh, by host, by server. So um, in here, it looks like uh, some of our FT search nodes are having, uh, have had an issue uh, in the last 60 minutes. And that actually uh, makes sense, because this particular stream module runs on active search nodes, so those two are correlated and, and rightfully so. Other things that we do for operations is there are many other dashboards that we use, but here the final example here is we also monitor the flow of data as it comes from, from our customers' data centers and into Sumo Logic. Uh, this particular is a very operational metric. It's not, it's not an actual total volume of data, but this actually represents how well our um, final resting place component where the data finally lands and is persisted um, uh, in a historical format, how much this component is seeing. And typically, if we see a drop um, in this data, in the data flow, we can tell that uh, there are issues occurring. So it, at this point in time, it looks pretty smooth that everything is going um, as, as expected. So this is from our operational perspective. Um, now let me switch quickly over to um, to how, um, uh, how we monitor this for um, real-time business insights. So um, I, hopefully you guys are, I can see the, the, the new, new chart over here that I've switched to. 
Um, so when I st I'll start on the left side here again. Um, one of the very important metrics, uh, as you can guess, that's for Sumo Logic is the total volume of data that we're getting from our customers. Uh, so what matters to us also is what types of customers are we getting the data from. So what you see on the left here, and unfortunately, because this is not a production system, um, we only have paid type of an account uh, over here, and we don't, if, if this was a production system, you would see trial accounts and free accounts also uh, having layers uh, in this particular graph. Now, it looks like here we had a spike. Uh, this is on a per 10 minute sl time slice, and this is a test system, so it's not a very, very big load, but we went to about 1.6 gigabytes of data in this particular at 1.20 in the morning uh, last night. So this shows you a 24 hour flow of data as it's coming into our system. Down here, it's actually showing you uh, the same information, but across uh, the last seven days and across the one hour time, time slice, right? And what you can see here is, for example, we have this big dip in this data flow. It went all the way down to zero. And the reason for that is because I know that on Sunday, which is when this happened around 8 p.m., we had actually brought this deployment down uh, to do some new instrumentation and set up some new automated tests. Uh, and during that time, we didn't have any flow of data into the system. But you can imagine that if you had a graph like this monitoring a real-time flow, if we saw a dip um, in this ingest path, uh, that would that would uh, that could potentially uh, signal a problem or or um, signal that we lost customers or or, or or what have you. Okay, so that's on the data inflow. We also monitor some metrics that are very important to our customers. So, for example, one of the most important metrics to our customers is how well our search is performing. So, what you see here in the middle, on the top top, you see uh, information about the top top ten slowest searches that we're seeing on our test system. So um, here what I'm extracting is session IDs and uh, the time in seconds that it's taken. Uh, these are, these are uh, the, the top 10 slowest in the last 60 minutes. Um, that's, a, that's a metric that we keep a, a, a very close eye on. We, we constantly uncover um, small issues and, and bottlenecks and we constantly push new code to improve performance of our searches. And for the most part, most of our customers sort of don't even see see these kinds of issues because we're on top of them um, uh, because we're monitoring very closely. Uh, the next set of things that we that we like to monitor at Sumo Logic for, from the business perspective is um, how well are our product features actually being adopted, and what are our customers using um, doing with our product. So one of the one of the one of the graphs down here in the middle, uh, the, 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 uh, in the middle uh, at the bottom, is a graph that actually looks at the types of searches that our customers are using Sumo Logic on. So we have two types of uh, searches. The one is the ad hoc. The first one is the ad hoc search, which is basically when our customers go into troubleshooting mode and, and leverage Sumo Logic to troubleshoot um, some issue that they may have with their infrastructure. And the other one is the sort of proactive monitoring type of search, which is a scheduled search, which runs in the background at periodic intervals and sends summary data back to customer via email or other means. So we introduced actually the scheduled searches uh, after we had the ad hoc searches uh, because it's been requested by our customers. And as you can see here, uh, it has clearly been uh, a popular feature. Um, and also you can see other characteristics of this particular feature is that because it's scheduled and it's periodic, you see a pretty smooth distribution over time of how many of these occur. Uh, and then you can also see that the characteristic of the ad hoc searches is much more bursty because it is some, it, it is, it, it, the feature is used when people actually need to do something um, to troubleshoot or, or do some, some analysis that's ad hoc in nature. So you see spikes and bursts. Uh, one of the things that we've noticed is that as we monitor this metric is that we can actually um, predict uh, or detect issues that third-party service providers have. Uh, for example, uh, you, we can localize if our customers in Europe uh, that are running, say, in one of the public cloud providers in Europe are doing a lot of ad hoc searches, um, it's sometimes correlated with those public cloud providers having issues in their infrastructure and our customers using Sumo Logic to, to try to troubleshoot what's going on. So it's, a, it's actually a very interesting metric that we monitor. The other one is that we also monitor is uh, things like uh, the frequent operators that, that people use in our searches. Um, so this here is the first operator in, 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 in search queries that our users are uh, running. 
And what's interesting about this one is I found this this morning is that this lonely down here extract operator has been used only once in the last 24 hours, um, and that's actually pretty interesting because extract operator was a first operator we created at Sumo Logic that helps our users extract values out of machine and log data. And then what we realized is that it's a little bit too complex and that we, we can do better, and so we created the parse operator. And as you can see here, its parse operator is the top operator, um, most popular operator here, and clearly um, our customers and internal and external have actually adopted it and use it much more heavily than they use the extract operator. Um, other things uh, that we monitor also is the top active users by organization and, and whether they're successfully logging in or not. So you can see this down here, frequency of logins uh, by, by organization and by user. In this case, you see many internal users and you also see some of the things like the test, um, test uh, user and QA performance users, which are, are automated um, tests that run against this production system and measure performance at a very uh, uh, at, a, at a high frequency um, rate. Okay, so these are the two examples of how Sumo Logic uses it, and each one of these dashboards has, you know, another five or ten that follow it. But I'll stop here in the interest of time, and I'll now show you how how easy it is to actually create a new um, uh, monitor and place it in the dashboard and use it for real time monitoring. Okay. Okay, um, I'm now going to switch back into the Sumo Logic user interface, and I'm going to go uh, into our search interface. So in preparation for this, I've created actually a query, which is pretty straightforward. I'll walk you through it, that will extract a certain metric from our data. So this particular metric is going to run over the last 60 minutes, and it's essentially uh, counting how many warnings uh, one of our components uh, generates in in one hour. So in this particular case, I'm looking for a warning, as you can see up here. Uh, I'm looking at it at, um, at um, across a category receiver. Receiver is a component that receives all the data from our customers. So it's a pretty uh, highly scalable component, and we monitor it very closely. I'm looking at it at, at a 10-second time slices. So each 10 seconds, I'm going to compute how many warnings we get from this component, and I'm going to count that by that time slice, and I'm going to sort it. So right down here, this is already computed. I see a table um, on a per 10 second basis, which is not a very useful visualization of this type of data. So let me just switch that and look at it as a, uh, as a graph. In this case, I'm going to use a line graph, and it's pretty easy to switch around which type of visualization you use. You can pick, pick any one of these that's available here, including uh, an area graph. But I think for this type of a metric, warnings uh, across time, probably the line graph Work, works rather well. So now this is a, a search, an ad hoc search, and how do I now turn that into a da dashboard? So it's a, like I said earlier, it's a single click. I click on the on this icon. I pick a dashboard. I'm going to put it onto this new dashboard here. Uh, I'm going to put it in column one. Let's just call it count or receiver warnings and add it to the dashboard. And that will, if we're lucky, bring us back into that dashboard and show us this particular metric um, right down here. Here we go. Hold on a second. Here we go. So we, we have the count of receiver warnings. That is now a monitor that is going to be updating in real time. And let's see if it, if it does it while we're looking at it. Don't be shy. Um, and now what, what, can you, what other things can you do here? So, okay, so we just had an update here. So let's first see, well, it says that I don't like this arrangement of, of, of monitors. It, it looks like I have to scroll. That's not so good. So I can very easily drag and drag around and drag and drop these monitors into, into other places where it makes sense. So, for example, I'll, I'll drop it right next to this one here. And then the dashboard will figure out that it shouldn't have this gap and will realign everything uh, as it should be. Other things that I can very quickly and easily do here in the dashboard, I can change the name of a dashboard. I can share this dashboard. I can delete it. I can um, uh, set up a column header for each one of these columns. I can then, you know, change and edit any one of these monitors. Um, I can I can look at the uh, exact statistics of when this was last updated, what the time range is, what the progress is over how much it's computed already. Um, I can actually change the time range to any other time range that I want to change to. So if I don't want to look at this on a 24-hour basis, I can I want to look at it. Uh, over the last 30 days, I can simply change, change this right in here. 
Um, other things that I can do is I can actually start changing things like which monitor type am I using for this. So I can go right in here and select a different visualization. So let's say that we pick a column graph. I'm not sure whether it's going to be a good one. Let's try it. Oh, it looks like it's actually a pretty good one. So um, this is, again, our monitor that we saw earlier, uh, warnings for receiver components. Um, I can actually do other things as well. So in some cases, you might want to manage the axes uh, in case the data isn't showing as, as nicely as you'd expect it to show. So you can actually change uh, the minimum and maximum values of, um, of, uh, of the y-axis, the value axis. Sometimes uh, you'll want to manage this um, depending on the data. I like to keep it automatic because if I get a huge spike that, that blows through the whatever I think the maximum is, it will the, the scale will adjust and I'll, ha I'll be able to see everything. Another useful thing is that sometimes you're ma mapping uh, values that, that are highly uh, variable in, in, the, uh, in the magnitude. So sometimes you'll have a component that has five errors and others have, will have a thousand errors, right? And you might want to show that on a logarithmic scale, which, which makes those types of values show a bit better um, on a graph and you can, you can have a better visibility into it. In this particular case, I think uh, the, uh, the linear scale is, is a pretty good metric. Uh, to look at it on. Um, you can change uh, the legend. You can move it around. You can actually change the truncation if, if it's a table, or in this particular case here, you can see how it's truncating some. You can change how it truncates. Um, if it's a stacking chart, you can stack it. You can change colors um, to different, different different types of colors if, if, if this color particularly doesn't work for you, and set thresholds and, and various other things. So, so this is uh, these are all the things that you can do and many more. You can actually switch switch modes uh, and go into a sort of a jumbotron mo mode. If you don't really, if you're just wanting to monitor this for patterns, you can switch into a into a, a, a simple view that only shows the relative magnitudes of data within these graphs, and then very easily just quick switch back into sort of full detailed mode. Uh, also, what's available to you is uh, real-time troubleshooting right out of the dashboard. So with a, with a single click of a button here, I can dive right back into, into my uh, search interface, and that'll bring me back into the search interface and actually run the particular query uh, that was represented here with exactly the time range um, that uh, this query analyzed. So I'm back here now, and I'm going to get the results of this query that I was looking at. And this is all the data. And what I can do now is I can actually go in and troubleshoot. I can review all of the actual raw messages that came back from that monitor and look at things such as spikes and, and continue to troubleshoot at bottom and troubleshooting range. So that's it. Um, I'll really quickly show you a couple of out-of-the-box components that we have that we monitor. So let me switch here, uh, switch gears into and go into um, some common components we have, for example, Cisco. We have a uh, Cisco package. I'm going to show you quickly a uh, Cisco firewall um, uh, dashboard that is a high-level dashboard that shows you some important metrics from a Cisco firewall, such as you know denied connections over time. On this top left graph here, uh, it's looking at uh, five-minute intervals over the last 60 minutes, and it's, and it's reporting how many denied connections it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's counted. Uh, it also shows you the top denied sources by IP address so that you can investigate further if you need to. Uh, other things that it shows are things like you know, connection statistics, so top outbound destinations. So where are your machines and your users connecting to uh, outside of your enterprise? And other things such as connections over time, inbound and outbound. So this is just an example. Uh, there are a variety of other dashboards that, that uh, um, we have for Cisco. Uh, then uh, VMware is another popular uh, con content package. This particular uh, VMware content package ha actually um, has a variety of dashboards that monitor and, co and display data from both individual virtual machines, ESX servers, as well as vCenter server in case you're a VMware, VMware shop, you'll probably know what that means. So in this case here, I'm looking at the uh, hypervisor performance uh, dashboard, which is telling me uh, how well are my physical servers that, are, that these hypervisors are running on are, are performing. So in this case, two ESX servers uh, across CPU, uh, memory, and um, uh, throughput perspective. 
Uh, this gives you some clue that, for example, in this case, it looks like CPU utilization on this ESX server has been growing steadily, and it's actually pretty high at this point. Uh, we have other uh, drill-down dashboards, such as the actual individual um, ESXi performance. So this is, a, when you look at this particular perform dashboard, you're seeing that ESX Server 1 that we just looked at in the previous dashboard, it looks like that we have some virtual machines that are busier than others. Um, and, uh, you know, you can get a pretty granular information about exactly what each virtual machine is, is doing um, and then de dive deeper into um, the user activity, uh, administrator activity on, on VMware and other things as well. Okay? And then, um, and I think that's it. Um, I'd like to pause here and actually end the demo and then see if you have questions that I can answer um, right now. Let me switch back to um, a different application in just a second. Okay. All right, I'll open it up for questions right now. Bruno, thank you. First question is, is it difficult, uh, the process of getting data into Sumo Logic? Um, it should be pretty straightforward. Our collectors are, are pretty straightforward to, to use. We, they don't require any parsers. We don't require any knowledge of what the data is, as long as we can see it, if it's in files or in syslog or, or in Windows events or Linux server events and things like that. It's pretty straightforward. It's, it's literally a couple of minutes worth of set up and you're ready to go. So it should be pretty straightforward. Um, if you are interested in, in, in tra trying it out, we're happy to, to walk you through the process. Okay, next question. How can I get alerts when values cross a threshold? No, great question. Actually, so there's, we have um, ability to, to set up scheduled searches which, that run in, in the background at, at various frequencies. Uh, and you can configure those very granularly to, to tell you, you know, when you, they can alert you every time uh, they run. They can alert you when uh, a value or number of messages hits uh, a certain threshold. They can actually also alert you when, you know, on based on aggregated data, such as, you know, if you ever see a number of exceptions on any one of our hosts that crosses a threshold, say, 20 in any, in any 10 minute period of time, send me an alert. So it can be pretty granular, and you can define those um, thresholds pretty easily in our, in our search interface. Okay. How quickly do the dashboards refresh? Uh, every few seconds, basically. They're in, they run in real time, and as, as soon as our system uh, gets new data over the wire and computes the results and updates that metric, it pushes that, uh, that, those values to a dashboard. And I'm not sure if you guys noticed, uh, but those, as I was showing the dashboards, they were updating in real time. So it's every few seconds or so. Okay. Which database do you use to store the events? Oh, that's a loaded question. It's technology. Behind the scenes, we use a variety of technologies to store data. Uh, we use a variety of, of, of storage systems. We currently run in Amazon AWS. Um, a lot of our historical data sits inside of the S3, and we use highly optimized index data um, that's highly distributed um, to actually power um, some of the dashboards and searches. And under the covers, we also use a lot of caching technologies to make sure that, that the system performs uh, at the performance rate that we need it to perform. So it's really, the, there's no single answer. There's a variety of technologies that work together to actually make this all possible. Okay. What types of data does your software process? For example, NetFlow data. We don't do NetFlow. We do a NetFlow with, with a partner right now. So we have a solution for NetFlow. We don't do it natively uh, currently. Uh, but we process data from, uh, from, for example, events and logs from operating systems, syslog data from network devices and routers and switches and firewalls, proxies. We process application data from, from things like Java and, and Ruby and, and uh, C sharp and, and, and C++, what have you. Uh, all kinds of data that's written by applications and, and systems. Um, so it's a really a wide variety of data sets um, that, that are available to you. Okay, how long can you trend data in a dashboard? How does that impact the performance? 
Uh, great question. And I'll say that you can, you can trend data as long as you need it to. So um, I typically look at data um, over the last few minutes, last few hours, days, sometimes weeks, and as long as months. Um, if you set up a, a monitor that's running over the last, say, month of data, uh, it, it will run at the same rate and same speed as the monitor that runs over the last one minute of data. And that's exactly the, uh, why um, this particular technology is diff different than what you'll see out there today, is because we run in real time. And once we've computed one slice of time, it never has to be computed again. So if you imagine a 30-day monitor that is looking at a trend, uh, the, the 30, 30 days ago piece of data that it's displaying, it's computed 30 days ago, and it does not need to recompute it. So it, it runs at the same speed as, as, as the very short-term monitors because they all look at just the current data coming into the system, which is what makes Sumo Logic dashboards um, much better performant than, than the stuff that you'll see out there today. One more question. How, mm -hmm. What is the licensing model for Sumo Logic? Uh, it's pretty straightforward, actually, and you can, you can find more details on our website. And uh, I think on, underneath our product page, there is a pricing page. But it's essentially based on the volume of data that we process and, and manage for our customers. So uh, really, that, that gets broken into two dimensions, which is how much data approximately do you send in one day? And then how many days of retention do you require? So many of our customers keep data for, you know, 30 to 90 days. Some keep data actually for multiple years as well. It really depends on what type of business you are and what type of uh, data retention policies you, you, you need to have. Okay. One final question, Bruno. Mm -hmm. Does Sumo yeah. Logic support any statistical formulas in the dashboard, such as mode or standard deviation? Absolutely. Um, I've mentioned some of that. In fact, some of those were... Uh, shown in, in uh, that configuration database table that I showed underneath. So we, we, we support things like percentiles, um, standard deviations, averages, means, um, and various other things, including sampling operators that help you analyze the data as well. Okay, great. Well, I think uh, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks, Bruno, for the great information, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Excellent. Thank you very much.